Hello everybody, this is Namita Thapar, Executive Director of MQ Pharmaceuticals and today we're going to be talking about heart failure, not to be confused with heart attack. And to learn more about it, we have a super special doctor with us today, a dear friend, Dr. Eric. And Dr. Eric literally wears many hats. He's not only a renowned cardiologist in the country, he's a chairperson of Campion School. He has a program called Breakfast with Porges that he runs for postgraduate medical students. Um, he started a palliative care center, a fabulous one, two years back and a lot, lot more. Dr. Eric, let's start with the biggest question. What is heart failure and how, how is it different than a heart attack? Let me put it this way. The the term heart attack means that the heart has suffered from sudden stoppage of blood supply mm -hmm. caused by a block in the artery that carries blood to the heart. Therefore, that particular part of the heart that suffers from this lack of blood supply will actually die. Right. And when it dies, when that muscle dies, it cries with pain. And that's why you get the pain of the heart attack. Correct. Now, that is a heart attack. Correct. Now, if a large part of that heart is damaged and it causes the severe malfunction of the heart as a pump, okay. then the person will go into heart failure. Got it. So, that's so the in other words, a heart attack can lead to heart failure. Okay. Are there other things that can lead to heart failure? Yes, absolutely. Okay. This is only one small cause. Okay. Okay. I would say a relatively minor cause. There are many other causes that can lead to the malfunction of the heart as a pump. Okay. Because remember, in its entirety, the heart is a pump. Correct. So now there are three or four different things that can go wrong with this. Okay. Number one, the pump itself, the compressor itself may get damaged. Okay. We said one, it could get damaged by a heart attack. Right. However, the compressor can also get damaged by other conditions. Okay. For example, diabetes itself can cause muscle weakness. Okay. Okay? So right. you can have a weak heart because of diabetes. Got it. Supposing that pump has to pump at a very high pressure. Eventually, it can't keep up pumping at a high pressure. Right. And therefore, the muscle will get damaged. Understood. So that high pressure is high blood pressure. Got it. So if you have high blood pressure, then it can damage your heart Another muscle. Another reason for heart failure. Exactly. Because the pump gets damaged. Pump gets damaged. Got it. Okay. So now, a pumping means it's like a compressor. Correct. So it can't compress, it can't push out blood. Correct. Okay. If it can't push out blood, then the blood cannot go and circulate it's the oxygen to all the organs. So all the organs start malfunctioning because of failure of the heart muscle. Understood. I did mention a little while ago that the blood has to come back to the heart. Right. For the heart to pump it out. Right. But supposing there, it doesn't allow, something doesn't allow the blood to come back, then even though the heart is pumping normally, it doesn't have the blood to pump out. In order to for the blood to come back to the heart again, it has to relax. Right. So there's a squeezing motion and a relaxing motion. If it doesn't relax adequately, then the blood can't come back into the heart for it to pump. Correct. Okay. So we call that a relaxation failure. Okay. So you have two types of heart failure. A pumping failure. Mm -hmm. And a relaxation, relaxation failure. failure. Okay? okay, got it. If the heart muscle becomes thick, okay. then it cannot relax properly. It's like a thick walled balloon. And it doesn't allow the blood to come back adequately. Therefore, the heart cannot pump out the blood. Correct. And therefore, this person has relaxation heart failure. 
Now, why would the heart muscle be thick? Is there something you're born with, or you damage it over time? The most important and commonest cause is high blood pressure. Okay. Okay. Because the heart has to pump against a high pressure, so it's like doing isometric exercises and building muscle in the gym. Right. You know, people lift weights and right, stuff like that. Right. So the heart is doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get a chance to rest. Right. If it stops and rests, the game is over. Right. 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 So therefore, it's constantly doing much more work mm -hmm. or exercise than it should be doing. So the muscle becomes thick. Right. And when it becomes thick, it pumps well, but it can't receive blood. Understood. So there is, therefore, it becomes relaxation heart failure. Which is why there's a pumping heart failure and a relaxation Correct. heart failure. I'm using very Depending simple terms. Depending on where exactly the issue is. Exactly. So, so I'm using very it. simple terms. Now, there are other diseases which can involve the heart muscle and make it thick, okay? Some of them are you're born with, mm. okay, thick muscle. Correct. All right? Or there are other diseases where extraneous substances can go into the heart muscle and make the muscle thick. What are those diseases? Well, you have something called amyloidosis. It's a big word. Okay. But basically, we call it as if uh, a, a group of diseases where the extraneous substances mm -hmm. which don't belong in the heart at all right. go into the heart okay, and get deposited in the heart muscle, making the heart muscle thick. Okay. And therefore, they'll end up with relaxation, heart failure. Understood. Now, okay. Doc, we, we spoke about how uh, this is not detected because people don't even know what symptoms to watch out for. Correct. So, if I'm somebody who's having heart failure, mm -hmm. what are the symptoms I should know about? Okay. Now, there are a multitude of symptoms, mm. but let's take the very common ones. Okay. Number one is fatigue. Okay. Why the fatigue? Because the heart... Whether it is relaxation heart failure or it is pumping heart failure, mm. not enough blood is pumped out right. to supply oxygen to the muscles, to the brain, to the kidney. So all these structures malfunction because of lack of oxygen and nutrition. So you get fatigued. You can't walk because you get tired. Okay? Absolutely. Similarly, okay, you the lungs which bring in oxygen, mm -hmm. okay, the lungs become heavy because the fluid from the lung cannot get back into the heart. So the lung becomes heavy and the person starts getting breathless. Okay. So he walks, he gets fatigue, he walks, he or she walks and gets breathless. These are the cardinal symptoms of heart failure. The patient may say, I've been putting on weight. I've got swelling of the feet. And remember I told you a little while ago that blood cannot return to the heart right. easily right. because there is relaxation heart failure. Right. If it doesn't return to the heart, then it still stays in the feet, it stays in that's the tummy. That's where the swelling comes from. And that's where the swelling comes from. Got it. Got okay? It. So swelling is a very, very important sign or symptom of heart disease. But then what are the tests that would do to confirm your hypothesis that this person does have heart failure. Okay. You can get clues mm -hmm. from an ECG. Right. Which is a common test that... Absolutely. Okay. Number two, another common test is a chest x-ray. Okay. Normally, if you have heart failure, the heart becomes big. Hmm. So, if you have an enlarged heart, you should think in terms of heart right. failure. Okay. Got it. Number three is now we have... A Wonderful test which has been around for a long time, which is called a, an echocardiogram. Right. Okay. Right. Often known as 2D echo, two-dimensional mm -hmm. echocardiogram. Okay. Where you can use ultrasound, just like you use for the tummy, you Correct. use for the liver, you use for the kidney. You can use the same ultrasound for the heart. Correct. And you can actually see the pumping of the heart. Okay. So not only can you see the pumping, you can see each individual wall of the heart which is pumping and you can decide whether the pumping is normal or abnormal. In a pumping failure, the pumping will be abnormal. Right. In a relaxation failure, the relaxation will be abnormal so and you can actually see it. 
in the 2D echo. You can see it and you, there are various calculations you can make to decide whether it fits in with the definition of heart failure. There's also a specific blood test. Okay. Which can tell you whether there is heart failure present or not. And it is common for both diastolic heart failure, I mean, or relaxation heart failure, right. or pumping heart failure. Right. Okay. And that test is a blood test. And it goes by the very fancy name of NT-Pro-BNP. It's a chemical in the blood, mm -hmm. okay, which you analyze. Right. And that chemical is produced by a failing heart. Understood. So when the heart starts failing, it produces this chemical and throws it out into the blood. Understood. So if you check for that chemical and you find it in the blood beyond a certain level, then you can say confidently that this person has heart failure. Got it. So once you identify the heart failure, that there is heart failure, then you have to look for the cause. Right. And there are so many different causes of heart failure that you must search for and identify because then, then you come to the treatment. So not only Absolutely. do you correct. So not only do you need to treat the failing heart, but you also got to treat the cause that produced that failing. Whether it's hypertension, diabetes, whatever, whatever it could it be, is. it could be severe anemia, it could be an uh, uh, electrical failure of the heart. There correct. are so many causes. How do you treat heart failure, depending on what the cause is? Yeah, there's a general treatment for heart failure. So all the heart failures that you have will have one kind of treatment. Right. And then superimposed on that one kind of treatment will be specific treatment depending upon the cause. Let us say a lady has very heavy periods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is quite common. Right. And because of the heavy periods, she develops severe anemia or lack of blood. Right. So what does the heart have to do? It has to pump more and more because there's very little blood. So it has to pump more and more to try and meet the demands of the various organs in the lady's body. Right. Ultimately, because the periods keep on being heavy and she's not taking enough nutrition or the uh, anemia is quite severe, the heart goes into heart failure. Right. Okay. Now you correct the anemia, you correct the lack of blood, okay. And there is no longer a strain on the heart and the heart will recover. Got it. So those are the treatable, treatable ones. conditions. Which are treatable the untreatable ones? ones? Uh, untreatable heart failures, where you, where we, whatever you do is not going to be... So the muscle not, is very severely damaged. Exactly. For example, like, let us say a heart attack induced heart failure. Hmm. Damage the heart, you can't repair that. Okay, so the damage is permanent. Does it affect the lifespan of a patient in such cases? Absolutely. How many years Absolutely. are you talking about? The more severe the damage, obviously, the, the greater the chance that the person will die early. What is the quality of life in these kind of conditions? Well, it's, it, it all depends upon how much the heart is damaged. Right. Okay. Your ability to, you, to lead a normal life and to do all your regular activities activities of normal life mm -hmm. will depend upon how much heart function you have lost. So it's again very relative. In all very the relative. cases, it's one of those conditions which is very patient specific, uh -huh. cause specific, symptom specific. And that's a great segue to our two lovely ladies here. Absolutely. We must speak to them and Dr. Do chime in as they're yeah, explaining yeah, yeah. Sure, their sure, journeys. Sure, sure, sure. So Absolutely. Pramila, let's start with you. Tell us about your journey. I don't think mine was a heart failure. <laughs> well, that's what she thinks. But anyway. <laughs> oh, that's what she thinks. <laughs> but I did get heart pain, you know. Okay. And a little discomfort in the heart. So after two or three hours, I call up Eric. Okay. He sent me for ECG and all that. He said, now, my dear lady, you stay here. Let your daughter go back. Oh, he admitted you to the hospital? He ad admitted me straight away. What was the diagnosis? She was feeling out of sorts. Correct. She was feeling as if she had no energy. Right. She wanted to lie down. As I told you, fatigue is one of the signs and symptoms of heart failure. Right. And she actually did have heart failure. Mm -hmm. Okay, because of lack of blood supply. Okay. And she was about to have a massive heart attack. Oh my so, God. which is when I saw her... She not only had heart failure already, mm -hmm. but she was about to permanently damage her heart. 
So we got her admitted, treated her basic whatever treatment we had to give her. And then we did an angiogram which showed the, all these blockages. And then we had to do angioplasty. She had other risk factors. Okay. Diabetes and, you know. Blood pressure. High blood pressure. Okay, so that okay. was uh, adding on to Adding it. on oh. to the uh, strain on the heart as well as it was affecting the circulation. So her heart was not getting enough blood supply. Got it. Therefore, the pumping went down and she was at risk of damaging her heart permanently, in which case she would have gone into permanent heart failure. Understood. But because we did, did it everything in time, her heart failure recovered. Fantastic. And now her heart, her heart function is normal. So when you were feeling the fatigue and all that, you, you didn't pay attention to it, you just thought it's normal no, stress? No, actually fatigue. I was not feeling fatigued as such. But that day, particularly, you know, while having lunch, you know, I did feel a little warm and breathless and right. I she never realized. Of breath no, everything was symptom, coming, together. coming together. Yeah. You know, one very important thing that you mentioned while we were speaking is palliative care. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and you said two years back you started a palliative care center. And mm -hmm. that does tie into heart failure because a lot of people where it continues for years would need palliative care. Okay. Firstly, just let's talk about what is palliative care and what okay. is it that you are yeah. doing as a cardiologist. Okay. So the WHO sometime in the late 90s, early 2000s came out with a very comprehensive uh, definition of palliative care and what the WHO said which we still believe today that any disease, any, whether it's heart, lung, kidney, bone, wherever, which is serious enough to cause limitation of life. Mm -hmm. If it's a serious illness which can cause life limited conditions, they need palliative care. And in this palliative care, what is really done is not only do you take care of physical pain of the patient, if there is physical pain or physical discomfort, you take care of mental pain, okay. you take care of financial pain, mm -hmm. you take care of social pain. So there's a concept of total pain. Okay. Okay. People who are seriously sick, okay, they get ostracized from society, they lose touch with society. So you kind of have support groups for them. Okay. Got it. And, Some a, and, of them, a, and a whole holistic, it's a whole holistic approach. So even the doctors in palliative care center would be absolutely across the spectrum. Across the spectrum. Right. Okay. And when we do this palliative care, right, we do not disconnect the patient from his primary doctor. So now what we do is we when we admit the patient to our center, which is by the way is at Mahalakshmi, right. okay, we admit them with their caregiver. Oh. Okay. And how long do they stay with you? Typically? Well, minimum 15 days okay. or maybe more if required. So where we train the caregiver. We train the caregiver Got to it. give the right kind of treatment. We have Neelam right here. Of course. And she just visited, uh, Neelam visited your palliative care center this morning. And I would love to hear from her. What was her initial uh, just feel of the place? It started in a small manner in <coughs> with 10 beds. And he started saying, I'm going to expand it. There were some people who really came forward and uh, they put their heart and soul and their money. And of course, he was the driving force behind it. But it was very beautiful today to see that these ladies had come from Lal Bagh, and there were about four of them, and they smiled on their face. And we talked to these ladies, and I said, it must be a very good break from your normal routine of the house to come. They said, yes. We are going to come here every day. They are given snacks there. They are taken care for the whole day. I thought that was a beautiful idea. And that and is a holistic approach that you're yes. talking mm -hmm. about, yes. right? Mm -hmm. so because it's only when you tackle every aspect that yeah. you can see that smile that reaches the eye. Yeah, right? absolutely. That we just spoke about. And you know, this brings us to the end of another fabulous episode. When I started, I was thoroughly confused between heart attack and heart failure. And this Bade Dilwala doctor, if I may call him that, <laughs> uh, my poet friend, Dr. Eric, explained it in such layman terms uh, and made it so easy to understand. But regardless, this is a condition that goes undetected 
very very often and getting educated learning whether it's a pumping heart failure it's a relaxation heart failure what are the symptoms how can it be treated uh, what can it lead to is extremely important so let's get educated thank you very much <laughs>